Hey, people, Zarthwomp here, and welcome to episode 57 of the Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Last time, we were go we were doing some more cross-examining. We basically came up with a theory that basically that Nash was the one who fired the gun, and then basically fired his own gun and killed Windebank. However, Van Zeeks comes out with the whole, oh, there were only, only two bullets were fired. Only one bullet was fired from the na from the Sk the Sulkin brothers gun the Skulkin brothers gun, which basically means that they can't be the murderer. So as such, we then went got the disc back as evidence, and we discovered that the blood stain there's a blood stain on it that matches the one that that came from the same person that, who was shot in the store that night by the calendar. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I await your informed decisions and rest my case. I don't believe it. I had the jury on my side for once, for all five minutes. Oh dear, it wasn't even for five minutes, Runo. I don't even know who's doing this. My lord, wonder if I might say something at this point? Curiosity, dude. Oh yeah, they don't even give a name for this. Proceed, Mr. Foreman. Been something about a bit in a bit of a fog up until now, if truth be told, but all of a sudden... The answer's bully obvious to me and my men. There's only one thing for it. Oh, no. Very well. The court will hear from the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, you will present your leanings as to the defendant's culpability. Guilty. 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 Just head slam. We have a consensus among the jury, it seems. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. I love how Mia apparently stole, uh, apparently Godo stole from, stole that phrase from Van Zeeks who then tied to Mia, who then tied to Phoenix. Essentially, it went roundabout. <laughs> yes, and then basically, and then Van Zeeks finds out a hundred years later, Mia, who's of Japanese descent, steals his phrase. Oh, come on now, they're stealing my phrases now? They're stealing my phrases, come on. Can't you not just just stop doing this to me! You wonder why I have against you. You're here 100 years from now taking my phrases, acting like you own the phrase, acting like you came up with it on you. Well, you make me sick, Miss Mia Fey. Yeah, Van Zeeks gets channeled during Mia's trial, during a trial where Mia was defended. Van Zeeks starts slamming bottles, he starts slamming fists. That's, that's my line! I wrote that for Haley! Yes, the fact is that just this line is getting bounced around. This is everyone who who came up with this line first. Ah, uh, how dare he you dickens us? Don't worry, Iris. I don't think we're finished yet. There's still more of this case than we realize. There must be because there's one thing that I'm absolutely certain of. Gina didn't shoot Mr. Windebank. That's beyond any doubt. Very well. We will proceed with the second submission examination of the day. Mr. Foreman, are you and the other jurors ready? Get her damn squadron is primed and ready for action, sir. Very good. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have now determined the defendant to be guilty. Judicial findings. Excuse me. Once a rogue, always a rogue, I say. <laughs> Different breed to us law-abiding citizens. As only two bullets were found at the scene, I would say the whole case is done and dusted. You don't need a stereoscope to see the truth here. Every which way you look at it, it was the pickpocket. Hmm, I never imagined that simple operation would cause me such grief. The accused attempted a, a theft on the previous day. I can see I'm in for a busy day ahead. I am ballistics expert. I have seen the manly shootings. There is nothing I do not know about the guns. You want me to explain ballistic markings? They will say they are like fingerprints of the gun. 
Now I will write my findings in a book, so that way this can be a tutorial in nearly every Ace Attorney game. Hmm, it would seem there is a little remaining room for doubt. I have to admit, I was, uh, I was rather bowled over by the argument put forward by the chap in black. But when that fell apart like a house of cards, I saw that I jolly well been hoodwinked. Well, no more! Ugh, the whole courtroom is turning against me. It's not fair! Iris, that prosecutor's being mean! That's because Jenny's done some things she shouldn't have done in the past. That doesn't make her a murderer. Do you want to argue with me, little girl? Allow me to savor this fruity vintage while I savor the spectacle of your fruitless debate on the matter. Oh, but before I do... Then Van Zeeks walks over, casually walks over to Iris. He lowers, he, he gets down on one knee, lowers his glass right below her eye, and basically... Miss Little Girl, if you would be so kind, please cry to my hollow chalice. Your tears will make this vintage all the more delectable. It shall please my palate to taste the saltiness of your tears. Here's to the truth coming out, eventually. And here's to making a little girl cry. That's enough preamble. Counsel, proceed with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. The defense's rebuttal. Okay, I'm just looking around. Would you please stop muttering about things that have nothing to do with this trial, sir? The defendant's life is on the line here. Hmm, well, that thing is, I couldn't really say that it has nothing to do with this trial, to be honest. Huh? I mean, there's no question that the man was shot, but the bullet had simply vanished from his stomach. It's quite inexplicable, don't you think? I almost don't want to ask, but this surgery you've been muttering about all this time, you were operating on... What was that fellow's name now? Herlick? No. Herlock? No. Herlock? Herlock Sholmes by any chance? Yes, good lord! It was that her airlock fellow! What? You're you're the surgeon that operated on Mr. Sholmes? And then I was glares at at Shulk at Sulky. Sulky! Sulky! What the hell? Uh, my my lady! Your my lady your ladyship! You said you got the best surgeon, but you got this guy, you got this goober, who left a scapula in Charlie's stomach? Ah, uh, my Irish voice is giving out, I'm so sorry. That's right, using the very latest anesthesia techniques, I might add. It was a fairly major op, I can tell you. This is crazy. Let me see, the fellow was brought in not long after midnight, if I recall correctly. They said he'd been shot by some criminal or other, so I opened him up like a shot. But the funny thing is, I went over his insides with a fine tooth comb and couldn't find the bullet anywhere. So I'm afraid I had to throw up my hands and just stitch up the fellow back up. I hate to state the obvious, but... Yes! Surely that's because the bullet is still at the scene of the shooting. The cause of the defense is correct. As is clearly shown by this photographic print, the bullet as at the Shulkin brothers fired at Mr. Sholmes hit him from the stomach region. Then exit his body and lodged into the shop wall where the calendar was hanging on the door. I think you'll find this rather quite simple. You consider the problem three-dimensionally. And then, and then juror number three. Did somebody mention 3D? He's anti-Hafumi. Huh? Who do you think I am, son? Um, well, juror number four is, what, is about the best I can do. Formerly juror number six. As soon as I saw the wound on the man's stomach, I flipped him over. Like a pancake? Yes, I got BS spatula and flipped him right over. Uh, are you saying that you checked his back? Of course I did. And there wasn't a trace of injury. No sign of that bullet had left his body at all. What? That's the point. The only logical conclusion was that the bullet was still somewhere in the man's innards. Which is probably why I set about slicing him up. And I'm still none the wiser, even now. How many times do I have to say it? Can someone please explain how it happened? Can someone please solve the mystery? 
it's almost as much a mystery as how this jewelry was put together. Hold it! Okay, let's talk to Yuna. I thought you were just a tourist. I am a tourist with the knowledge of guns as well as explosives and a desire to see the crystal tower burn in flames. Good day. I am visiting wonderful sightseeing. I would like to take Thomas to Crystal Tower, please. There's no way he's just a, vi a visa thing, tourist. <laughs> so, you're a ballistics expert. Who knew? I have much experience with guns. Ah. I have lived through many, how do you say, um, extreme, um, violent bout of, um, no, blood of, um, Extreme by bloodbaths, perhaps. Da, those extreme violent bloodbaths. English is very difficult, done. Considering the sort of people you associate with, I'm surprised you still have a tongue. Anyways, if you have a question about the bullets and guns, you ask me. There is nothing I do not know, no mystery I cannot solve. He's very confident in his knowledge of guns, that's for sure. But, if possible, please, only in the Russian language. He's not very confident in his knowledge of English, though, is he? No, still, we should bear in mind, he's our man if there's a mystery about guns or bullets. Van Zeeks has managed to convince everyone. When you have eliminated the impossible, he's dead, but he hasn't. He negated the possibility of me suing his ass for taking my phrases without my permission. Copyright infringement is going to kick his ass. If we're going to fight back, we need more material. And we have to fight back. We have to turn this trial around again. Okay. Let's go here. Yeah, we, could, yeah, we could probably do a pursue. Mr. Sholmes' surgeon is on the jury. I've experienced some coincidences recently, but this is ridiculous. I am as surprised as anyone. Why am I back in this jury? But there's no question that Mr. Sholmes was shot. Well, that's what the police told me when they brought me in. How bad was injuries, Doctor? He was, in a, he was in a bad way. He lost a huge amount of blood, you know. And I suspect he was shot quite close range, too. Because his skin was badly burnt around the point of entry. Burnt? As I said, I flipped the fellow over and examined his back. But there was no sign of an exit wound. Which is why I thought I'd better locate the lug and pop it out. And yet you say you found no bull inside the patient. Well, I wouldn't have done. Well, I wouldn't have done, would I? Because it's in the wall of the pawnbrokers. But how did it get there? I need someone to solve this mystery before it drives me insane. If there's only, if only there was some master in ballistics who could help, even if he looked extremely untrustworthy. So we have a disappearing bullet on our hands. Okay, I didn't want to try the pitting. Okay. Objection. Let's start presenting. Those two statements clearly contradict the idea that all I do is pit jurors against each other. Oh, a ballistics expert. Pitting, uh, P-I-T-T. On the night in question, Mr. Sholmes was shot by one of the Skulkin brothers. But since there was no sign of an exit wound on his back, we must assume the bullet didn't pass through him. However, no bullet was found lodged in Mr. Sholmes' body either. Furthermore, a bullet was found lodged in the wall of the shop where Mr. Sholmes was shot. Juror number six. Hello, my name is Villain. Pleased to meet you. This apparent contradiction in the facts that is so clearly troubling juror number four. Are you able to explain the mystery? I have seen a very similar situation in Motherland. It was night. There was blizzard. I was running away along mountain road and freezing cold. Golly! The snow was piling high on both sides of the road. It was very narrow and dangerous. My pursuers had hunting rifles and they were on dog sleds. Medical note, don't ask too many questions. I was shot from behind, and I fell down in snow. And this situation was very similar to what I used to do there from doctor. They could not find boot in my body. 
and no sign of how to say exit wound. Then where did the bullet go? Bullet never hit me. Well, if it never hit you, why'd you fall down? Bullet did frozen wall of ice very close to my side. What? One small piece, very sharp, broke away from lump of ice and pierced my body. It made deep wound that looked just like bullet wound. Good gracious! Of course, piece of ice quickly melted inside me. And what is solution to mystery of disappearing bullets? But, but that doesn't answer the question at all! Hmm? The shooting happened in a pawnbroker shop. Not some snowy man rode in another country! No! No! Why is it me in the snow? Why is it that the snow always screws me over? I fall on the ice! The ice is making me look bad! I swear! I quit! Just an idea, but we might not be looking at exactly the same scenario here. No, no! Where exactly was Hurley shot again? Um, well, according to the report, in his stomach. Sort of around this area, I think. Well, that's precisely where he's always wears a little pouch on his belt. A pouch? Actually, I might have noticed something like that. Yes, a pouch! It's where he keeps three glass vials of very dangerous chemicals that he uses in his investigations. What? Really? Yes, and I used to threaten Mr. Windebank once. And then basically, Sherlock, I know you have my mother's duvet. I know you have it. I know you have it, Windebank. Where's my mother's duvet? I don't have your mother's duvet. Answer me or I will pour this acid on your face. I will pour it on your face. Doctor, where's the pouch Mr. Sholmes was wearing? Mm, well, uh, the fellow had nothing like that on his person when he arrived at the hospital, just as far as I remember. If I may. Lord Van Zeeks. Well, I realize it's forbidden for the prosecution to interject during a summation examination, despite my desires to do so greatly. I should inform the defense I have the pouch in question in the antechamber outside the courtroom. Sorry? As I understand it, when the police arrived on the scene and found Mr. Sholmes injured, they removed the pouch in order to assess the wound. Ah, oh, thank goodness! I thought I was getting forgetful for a moment. Since then, it has been in my safekeeping along with all the other evidence related to the case. I can personally vouch for the fact that it has not been touched since the incident occurred. Very well. While extremely inconvenient, unconventional during a submission examination, I must demand the prosecution presents the item in question with all speed. Bring forth Mr. Sherlock Sholmes' pouch! I see. So this is pouch is the pouch that. Yeah. So this is the pouch worn by Mr. Sholmes on the night in question, is it? Look at that. One of the files is broken, and the leather around it is scorched black. It's almost as if the file exploded. Exploded. So that night, the bullet from the Shulkin brothers' gun struck Mr. Sholmes's pouch, and it was the glass file exploding that caused the fellow's injury. This bullet did not penetrate the victim, but was deflected into a wall of shop. A delightfully complex aroma. Well, it would appear one mystery has been solved at least. Though it is not though it has no bearing on the truth of this case. The burgling and burgling brother shot the detective, and the accused shot the pawnbroker. The pertinent facts of this case remain unaltered. Uh... But at least the mystery is solved! I can sleep easy tonight! Thank you, young man! Duh. Thank you very much. Glad I could help. Due to its bearing on the conundrum just solved, the court will sequester the, scru the scruffy pouch's evidence. Hattie's pouch isn't scruffy, it's stylish! Sholmes' pouch has been entered into the court record. Don't you dis Iris' sense of fashion, Judge, or else she'll end you. Okay, let's check this out. 
It's really scorched badly just here. Oh, that strap is broken. Look. This must be where the bullet hit then. Let me see. What? What the? Iris, look. Find where the broken file was. Do you see it? Ah, that's... The Skulking Brothers bullet. What a stroke of luck that it hit the pouch. This is an amazing discovery. What this means is, if there were three bullets fired at Windowbanks that night... We found exactly what the jail was not talking about. The, the, the third bullet. It's time to press that drawer again, I think. Okay. Now it's a major examination. It would appear the defense is somewhat struggling to alter opinion. Hmm? Please, my lord. A little more time. After all, that means there's a new piece of evidence. It could be a valuable clue, and you can't afford to overlook anything here. Right, Ryunosuke? There's still a way to turn this around. Somehow. I'm sure of it. Okay. Hold it! It's the number of bullets that has you convinced. Only two bullets were fired, and the two guns that fired them have been examined by the police. When the parlor maid asks me how many are invited for dinner, I always tell her to count the table settings. Well, that's logical, I suppose. Although, yes, sometimes all after dining, crockery goes does go missing. One or two guests rather like the fine china. Does your employer dine with thieves? And yes, the, the Skulkin Brothers. He, yes, your empl her employer is the Skulkin Brothers' friend. So I suppose. If there was another bullet somewhere of which we were unaware, I'd have to reconsider my position. A third bullet somewhere on the scene. Could that be a pos that Could that be possible? I can prove it. Allow me to show you then the third bullet. The armband! Take that! Here it is. We discovered it just now. Yes, on the nine question in Windowbank's pawnbrokery, another bullet was fired. Hold it! What is this new trickery? You Nipponese conjurer! Where did you find that bullet? It was lodged inside Mr. Sholmes' pouch. What? This pouch was removed from around Mr. Sholmes' waist before he was taken to the hospital. And since then, it has been touched by no one. Do, do you mean to say the shot fired by the Shulkin, bro the Shulkin Brothers that night? Yes. As your lordship has surmised, it hit this pouch. But, but that makes no sense whatsoever. We already know the whereabouts of the boy fired at Mr. Sholmes. It's clearly visible in this photographic print. Ah! Two guns from the scene have already been submitted to the court record as evidence. Yes, that's of Mr. Windebank and that belonging to the Skulkin brothers. An examination of both guns revealed that only a single bullet had been fired from each. Ah. But, but that must mean... That's right. We now know that on the night in question, three bullets were fired. However, only two bullets were fired from the guns recovered from the crime scene. And until that incontrovertible inconsistency is somehow expl explained, we cannot and must not pass judgment. Ah! Ah! Order, order, order! While this submission examination remains incomplete, this court has been, uh, been presented new facts. Facts that would appear to shake the very foundations upon which this case against the defendant has been built. As is my prerogative in this situation, I hereby temporarily suspend the submission examination. By... That's right. B by Jupiter! What? Bailiff, bring the witnesses back to the Senate at once. The three skulk... The three Skulkin brothers have returned. Witnesses. Governor! Were you listening to proceedings while the defense carried out the submission examination? We was, Governor. We was. Perhaps we could dispense with the tedious preamble. Simply answer this one question. A third boy has been identified at the scene of the crime. What do you make of that? Make of it, Governor? I, I don't make nothing of it. I can't... If, is it one of yours? 
Gore blimey, Gov. Gore blimey. Not a chance. In that case, did you have any accomplices? Was it? What? Never! The Skulky Brothers work alone! It's just the two of us. That's our trademark. What about Sulky? Why are you degrading Sulky's presidents in all this? How soon we forget poor Sulky? <laughs> Amen to that! What about poor Sulky? What about Inspector Sulky? Only two of the bullets on the crime scene originate from the firearms we have in evidence. The third bullet was fired from another gun. Where is it? Hermie, that's an uh, head scratcher. Hmm. Counsel for the defense. Y yes? I should like to hear your thought. I uh, sorry. I should like to hear your thoughts regarding these new developments. The third bullet and the mysterious missing firearm from which it came. Thinking back over all the testimony we've heard and of all the evidence we've seen, I think I'm starting to form a picture. A picture of what really happened that night. My lord, I think it's clear that this third bullet tells us about the Shulkin brothers. I know for a fact that there was a third person at the crime scene. And that basically they were, they, they hired the Sulkin brothers. On that night, Windebank's Pawn Brokery, the brothers has to have working with a third man. Um. The witnesses are clearly doing their best to cover up the existence of this accomplice. But the evidence all points to the fact that there was someone else present. Someone carrying a gun. Objection! An accomplice, you say? Pig swill! These protracted proceedings have already forced us to endure two summation examinations! Yet on all that time, there has been not a murmur of a third man, if this apparent wraith-like being exists. And I should know I'm a freaking vampire! I'm a vampire with a mullet! I know what I'm talking about! The court must be shown hard evidence. Without it, this fantasy will be crushed. Ah! The prosecution demands answers on two counts. Firstly, proof. Evidence that this accomplice was ever at the scene of the crime. And the second, and secondly, the identity of this spurious character. The Skulkins are lying, I know that. But how can I ascertain the identity of the person they're hiding? Well, Counsel? I'm supposed to prove the existence of this accomplice and reveal the person's identity even. In response to this pro the prosecutor's demand, my lord, the defense is... Ready to present answers. The defense is ready. I believe I can provide all the answers the prosecution demands. So, my nepo niece friend, despite the swimming eyes, you seem to think you have something to say. This promises to be, an in to be interesting. I have to push forward now. There's no other option. I need to use every single piece of evidence available to me if it will make a difference. In that case, counsel, I would ask you to present the evidence without delay. On the night in question, in the moment leading up to the death of the victim, what proof have you that there was a third intruder present at the scene? Okay. Okay, let's go in and present. Where's the satchel? Where's the satchel? Ah, here it is. Blood sample portfolio. Take that! The evidence is right here, in this portfolio. By Jove! That portfolio again, is it? Do you expect the court to rifle through your papers itself? Be more specific. You claim one of those blood samples proves the presence of this third intruder. Well, which one is it? What am I looking at here? There appears to be some green paint or such like around the bullet hole in the middle of this calendar. That's, that's a blood stain, my lord. A blood stain? Green blood curious. Even for you. Is the court to understand that this intruder was some unhuman creature like you? It's something developed by Herlock Sholmes. Of course it is. By the great detective. New invention, stop. Not yet a period of stories. Stop. 
It's this, you see. It does have a name yet, though. This rock marker spray is a chemical that reacts with the different elements of people's blood to change its color. Different elements of people's blood? Yes. Everyone's blood is slightly different. You see, because it's made up of different elements. So by seeing what color changes to, you can tell in a flash whose blood is it. Let's choose. Ooh, that brings a whole extra dimension to looking at blood. Pocket blood color room, stop. Very exciting, stop. As an example, this one shows the blood of the victim, Mr. Windebank. Oh, a striking blue. Yes, so you see, the green color of this blood stain on the calendar shows that someone else was shot in the main part of the shop. Now hold right there, young man. Could be, could be some unrelated incident, couldn't it? No, it's not unrelated. The date showing on the calendar is the date on which Mr. Windebank was killed. By golly! Therefore, we can assume that whoever was shot was shot on the same day. Then whose blood is it? Well, the Sulkin brothers on the, st on the stand don't appear to be suffering from any gunshot injuries. Which means that it must be the blood of somebody else. The third intruder, in fact. Objection. Whose identity the court is still waiting to hear? You, can, you can't delay this any longer, my learned friend. Who is this alleged third intruder? Take that! The man's name is Eggert Benedict. Eggert Benedict? Who on earth are you talking about, counsel? He paid a visit to Windebank's pawn brokery on the afternoon before the incident took place. When the accused attempted to deceive the pawnbroker into releasing this article into her possession. That's right. The man identified by the defense, Mr. Er, Eggert Benedict. Then attempted to take the article from the defendant by force. Broker! Um, yes, sir. I believe this pity pocket thief has just redeemed an article from you, no? Yes, yes, sir. The article in question belongs to me. I demand her to be returned at once. Now, get that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me a, give me back my overcoat you with you as well, and needless to say. I'm a music box six too. Inspector Gregson was there at the time and can attest to what happened. In the end, it was the inspector himself who took the disc. Can you corroborate this account, Inspector? Uh, yes, my lord. There's, that's more or less what happened. And in the interest of being thorough, I asked Winterbank for a print showing the fellow. Take him. Take him from one of his red ended recorder. Garbageness. I don't know how. It's, I don't know what's being said. Yes, that's him talking to Mr. Windebank that morning. And you claim this man is the brother's accomplice? Well, Mr. and Mr. Sulkin? Never seen that geezer over on me life! On me life, gov, on me life. Never seen him. Well, somewhat unsurprisingly, it appears our witnesses disagree with the assertion. I'm sure your lordship require, recalls my learned Nibody's friend's actual assertion, which was that he could prove the identity of the alleged accomplice. Yes, and I can. Then show us the evidence! Show us the stereoscope! I agree. We must see proof that the clean-cut gentleman in the photograph is the filthy criminal you say he is. This is the last piece of evidence. I had a feeling that something has been missing in this trial from the very start, but now I'm going to drag it, kicking and screaming into the courtroom. Are you, are you ready to present your evidence to the court then, counsel? Yes, my lord. The defense will present the evidence now. Proof that the man pictured in this photographic print was in fact the person struck by the third bullet. Take that! As I mentioned before, on the afternoon of the day in question, the defendant attempted, deceitfully admittingly, to reclaim this disc from Windebanks. Which is when the aforementioned Eggert Benedict appeared on the scene, I believe. This man then attempted to purloin the article from the defendant's possession, no? That's correct, my lord. I myself was present at the time. It was followed this it was following this that a minor incident occurred. 
But of course, sir. Here is the disc for you. Very well. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. Zoot toot and a toot. Wait a minute. That disc is mine. Ah! What do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You, you turn blood. You feed the animal. Being a music box disc, it has countless small but sharp metal protrusions all over its surface. Those protrusions cause Mr. Benedict's finger to bleed. And the resulting smear of blood is still visible on the disc now. Goodness, a blood stain, is it? My assistant and I have just analyzed the blood stain here in this very courtroom. Using my trusty Fogg gun! Yes, and we added the results to this portfolio. I say, it's green. It's exactly the same color as the blood around the calendar. The evidence is conclusive. The man calling himself Mr. Eggert Benedict, who was missed in Mr. Windebanks earlier that day, is the accomplice who was present at the scene of the crime that night. My lord, it is the opinion of the defense that Mr. Eggert Benedict should be summoned to the courtroom to testify. Hmm. It would certainly seem that we can ill afford to ignore this gentleman's apparent presence. Objection! This has gone on long enough now. This flagrant ignorance of the mechanics of law. Herlock Sholmes, you say? Yes, I've heard the name. The protagonist in the series of short stories for the vulgar classes. A god of detection or some such. But newsflash, I am the only god in this courtroom. For you see, I am the bringer of death. I am the reaper of the Bailey, who is a vampire with a mullet. I have the mullet of power that gives me strength and wisdom with my wine. And now you employ chemical substances divided by this fantastical persona in the highest court in the land? Do you expect us to take you seriously? The samples made by this plaything are not fit to be called evidence. Hmm. So the blood stain turned a shade of green. What of it? Here's you successfully proving that no other blood in the world would turn the same color. Ah, well. Talk to the moot! And pray, do not even think of suggesting that we should take Mr. Sholmes' word for it. Sholmes just says, I screw you, grammar! I loathe you, grammar! I knew it would come to this. Of course, Mr. Sholmes' invention isn't going to be recognized by any official body or by any sane person. But what other choice did I have? I'm just remembering what Father Christmas over there said before. About how he was temporarily suspending the summation examination. Ah. In other words, the examination isn't over yet, is it? In that case, I think that would be a good thing to end the episode off. Anyways, I really appreciate that you took a moment to watch this episode. You're great. If you would have come back for the next one, if you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. We'll see you next time. Bye.